Arr, me matey! It's totally the wrong thing to say when you're a viking. So, first I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to plunder you, and then will you do some trading with me? Yeah, because we kind of need some cows, and you know, we could take him, but we, we want to trade. Welcome to Takar's Reviews. Today we'll be talking about yet another viking game. But it's different this time, because it's designed by a Norwegian. So that has to be good. Hello. The game is called Viking Jarl, and it's about Vikings, and I am a Jarl. Well, not exactly. I'm one of the sons of the Jarl, and when he goes to Valhall, I need to prove myself that I'm worthy to take his place when he does so. And to do that, I have to travel the world, well, Europe, and trade and plunder, and just get the most honor. This game is not available in stores yet, but you can pledge to it on Kickstarter and get an early copy there. So just check out the description below the video here to get you to the site. So how do we go on with this game? So being a Kickstarter game, this is just a prototype you're seeing behind me now. So to keep in mind all the components here, nothing is final. Everything might change, even some of the rules. So what you're about to hear now and see, it might change before this uh, the Kickstarter actually launches. The goal of the game is to get the most glory points or honor points or viking points or whatever. It's victory points. You get points to win the game. If you manage to get 11 points and you keep the 11 points, uh, you win the game. Because when someone reaches 11 points, you trigger the end game. And if you have the most after the round, you win. But some, some many things may happen. But anyway, on my turn, I will draw one of these saga cards. And depending on it, it might be a bonus for me. It might hurt other players. Or it might be hurting myself by saying I have to play it at once as an evil event card or something. So these are very useful to have. I can keep it for later, but there is a hand limit of three, so you can't keep them forever. You have to use them if you want to get all the, 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 the best of it. But anyway, on my turn, I have two things to move. I have my ship here, but I also have my army here. And as you can see on the board, you have room for both the army and the ship. So I can change around the Vikings, depending on how I want to divide them, on my ship or my army. I can even have the army on the ship, if I want to. On your turn, you have simple options. You draw a card, that's the first thing. And then you... Oof, well, okay. Oh, well, you have a handout. It helps you a lot. So, draw a card, number one. Number two, roll the die. Oh, no, roll the die, okay. You roll the wind die, and this will affect how the ship can move. So, the die is four blank sides and one minus and one plus. I'm, I'm guessing this will change. Uh, normally you can move three spaces with a ship and the negative one will give you two spaces and the plus will give you four spaces in total. So if I roll the plus, I can move four plus spaces. So one, two, three, four. So it will be a wind against me or with me, depending on the die and no matter what the direction I'm going. Uh, also, I can move the army token if it's not in the boat. So you can move two spaces regardless of the wind. Uh, then, oh, let's see. Yes. Instead of moving one of these ships or the army, I can recruit new Vikings. And the number of Vikings I can recruit is, of course, based on the tokens I have left, but also on the number of colonies I have uh, settled on and I'm staying on at the moment. So this will change and you will come, become stronger during the game, hopefully, if some, someone doesn't mess you up. Uh, and then, step four, you can discard cards if you are above three. So if you gain a fourth card, a saga card, during your turn, you can still use it and not losing it before the end of the turn, so that's nice. There are two things you want to do in this game. You want to plunder, but you also want to trade. To plunder, you just go into these, one of these orange places here and you fight and we do combat afterwards. And to trade, you go into this green spaces, green here and green here. So I can go here, and when I discover it, like so, I will gain one of the resources that is uh, printed here on this token, which is now one lumber, or wood. So I get one of these lumbers and I put it on my army space. So I use the resources to uh, be able to build settlements and settlements I build on these white spaces here. So I can, for instance, go here and either I can, let's see, can either, either plunder it by facing this token here 
Or I can just skip the plundering and colonize immediately. So I have to pay one of each resources, one of each of these, and then I just find the corresponding uh, village token here, or tile, which tells me how many victory points it's worth. And this will help me to uh, store money and store resources on later. And on the back you have a history of this small town or, or uh, city. And then there is plundering. You see here we have uh, one guy defending this town, but he can, can also be two. If you will fight London or Paris, you will get more gold, but there will always be three defending it. And three is kind of a many people to defend it. So we're just gonna go ahead to combat right away. Combat is very simple in this game. So let's say I want to uh, attack Jomsborg here with the red, uh, the yellow army here. And in that army I have two fighters or Vikings. And right now there's one defender here, so one defender. Now the rules are you get one, one die per figure you have. And there are four dice in the game, but you can only use three at max. So if I had like this, I would only get three dice. The fourth one is for special rune cards you can play, or saga cards. The same goes for the defender, let's say he has three, but he only gets two dice at the max. So the same here, the third one might be able, unlocked by a card. So we just roll these at the same time, and we compare the highest with the highest, and the next highest with the next highest, like so. Uh, so, right now, I had to in order to defeat the, uh, the defender, you need to have higher than. And of course now, you can't, so I lose one Viking there. But here, I also lose one, so I lose two Vikings on this attack. So now we have a new round, and I might choose to escape instead. So, if it's like this, four versus one, it will be like this. So we will be here, and we only compare the highest, so he will lose one guy. Even though I have four to attack with, I can only use one die, since he has one defender, just like Risk. If you win the combat, you see here it says times one coin, I'll get one coin per Viking that survived the battle. So I'll get four coins in this example. If I had raided London or Paris, I'll get two coins per, per Viking that survived the battle, so that's a lot of money. And the money you just collect here, in front of you, and uh, use it for buying goods at these uh, places here. And goods are expensive, they cost two each, and you can also sell them for two each, so there's really no way to trade the goods up in value. Uh, but uh, optionally, you can raid these buy tokens, which gives you victory points instead of coins. So this one will give you two points, and this one will give you one point. You can also get one point for discovering Greenland, and that go only goes to one player. So you see, the game is very simple, but it's still it's kind of hard because you have to manage manage things. Like, if you want to attack London or Paris, you have to have five Vikings. Well, you don't have to, but you probably want to. And first, you get to have five Vikings on your ship, and you can't because the last is an army space, but you can have five in your army. And then, after you have loaded the army, you can then move the army down to Paris or London, and it's a far way to go, and it's a lot of travel that happens to, to get that far. Well, that's Viking Jarl. It's a very simple game to get into, and as you can see, it uh, looks very much like a Viking game. Yeah, you sail around, and you plunder, and you trade, depending on what you want, and uh, yeah, maybe what you're forced to do by other players. So the game has a lot of interaction. And these saga cards here, they can really change that by adding to the interaction and sabotaging or helping a player. Uh, there is one thing I have, I'd like to mention in this game, and the die, the weather die, a wind die. When you draw it, you can get a negative or a plus, and the negative says you can only move the ship twice. And if you get a plus, you can move it four times. Uh, so. The first I'll play the game, I rolled it like five times in a row, the negative one. And the next player, he rolled the plus one five or six times in a row. And there was nothing for me to do except for just looking and seeing that he gets way ahead of me by traveling uh, two times more than I can. And not my fault at all. So there was no way to mitigate that luck factor. And I, I, would, I would really like to see that happen, some sort of mitigation, because it was really painful. And even the one with the plus is like, oh, again, <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. So, yeah, 
the, the, that element is not my fondest uh, thing, but the game itself is kind of uh, kind of fun. It is. You feel the, the game, and it doesn't really take too long. It takes maybe an hour or more to play it with uh, three players. Uh, so once one player has reached 11 points, we play out the round and plus one additional round. And by then we just check who has won. And because it doesn't have to be the one that triggers the ending, <laughs> not at all, because th these saga cards can really affect the game and you can attack the settlements and you can really ruin stuff that sets you back a lot. Because if you lose a settlement, you also lose those points that the settlement was, was worth. So a lot of player interaction here. and. Uh, yeah, the, the traveling is is kind of uh, hard to manage at the beginning because it feels like it's a slow drag, and especially if you get the minus on the die all, all the time, so it really, really feels slow. But you, it's really quick rounds. Uh, you have, you move this ship uh, to between two, one to four spaces, and uh, yeah, that's it. And army, of course. And the battles are very short, and yeah, it doesn't really take long for its uh, before it's your turn again. So. There's little downtime in this game, and that's a really good fact, or thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you would like to see another Viking game, uh, I can really recommend that you look at this. Uh, it might really be something for you. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in another episode of uh, Tarkras Reviews. Please check out all my other reviews at uh, reviews.tarkras.net, and you can see uh, right now I have like, like 70 videos in English uh, for you to look at, and uh, there are many good games there. Okay. Thank you for watching and uh, see ya.